All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us once again, Dynasty Mirror Search for Huru. And I have the brother Rodney Ahinken uh, from, now you're, you're from Ghana originally, correct? Or originally, originally from Ghana, but born and raised in Sydney, Australia. Okay. Who's uh, currently in uh, Sydney, Australia. And today we're going to be uh, uh, speaking, talking on finance a little bit in regards to uh, investments. And with that being said, let me give this let me give you this disclaimer. I am not a financial professional, so any advice given, uh, you will you know however you say it. Uh, I guess uh, proceed up with your uh, on your own risk. I guess if if you guys understood that or whatnot. But Rodney, uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Uh, you know today we're going to be chopping it up about forex and Bitcoin and. Uh, whatever else you want to get into. Uh, I myself, I've never, uh, in, I don't think so, maybe through my 401k, may, um, maybe uh, invested somewhat in, 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 in Forex, but I do have some uh, crypto uh, through a company called uh, Carabar. Uh, but, you know, people, uh, you know, with this recent Bitcoin craze, which has actually died down once it got to about, you know, 17 and 18k uh i know a lot of people well not me personally uh who literally some sold their houses some took out the money out of their investment uh whether it be the 401k or ira or whatnot uh and dumped it in their into bitcoin and lost big uh i know a lot of people who are who are in forex or doing very well um now should people invest in both or should people just choose one? Like, what would we be your best, I guess, on that? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, the, the thing is, I, I I trade Forex. That's that's pretty much what I do. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be hired by a company, uh, a nine-figure company, to be able to give, you know, financial analyst, analytic views for 70,000 clients. Uh, and I'm the first African to be able to achieve that. My thing about the whole, uh, I guess, segregation of Forex, Bitcoin, stocks, commodities, and et cetera, et cetera, is that we should not place so much emphasis on what we should invest in, but we should place more emphasis in the skill of investing. Uh, to those who decide to invest at 19,000, 18,000, shame on you. And you do deserve the loss. Why? Because you came in on hype. You came in when everyone was excited. But what I'm going to, uh, I guess, uh, implore people to do is learn the skill of reading charts. And that skill of reading charts will be applicable through all the fields, whether it be Forex, whether it be cryptocurrency, whether it be stocks, commodities, whether it be bonds, whether it be futures, whether it be energies. When you learn how to read a chart, what a Japanese candlestick is, what a moving average is, what an uptrend and a downtrend is, then that skill can be applicable to anything. It can be applicable to even the real estate trends and when, where to invest and when to invest. The issue from what I see is not the matter of investing, it's the lack of education behind it. And us as a people, particularly Africans, are very, very lazy, sorry to say, because when you say that you have to go and study and spend 30, 60, 90 days to read a chart, they go, oh, no, I want to make money now. Uh, but they're willing to work. Ronnie, Ronnie, repeat that again. Repeat, repeat that again, what you just said. That's that important. Our, our people are very lazy. <laughs> and, 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 and then continue as far as, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you have to put in time. Money. Yeah, you have to put in time to be able to learn the skill to make money. And the, the the two things is that people are lazy to put in the time, whether it be 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, a whole year. And they, they don't want to spend money to know how to make money. That's the problem with our people, particularly in Ghana. So when you tell someone, oh, you want to learn Forex? Okay, well, learn this for you know six months. They'll be like, no, I want to make money now. And that's the issue with our people. But when it comes to getting a university university degree, they're willing to wait four years to get that degree and then look for a job. Or if they're working their nine to five, they're willing to wait two weeks for the paycheck, but they're not willing to put in the grind to learn how to invest so that skill can feed you for a lifetime. That's the issue that I think that we face as, as a people, which is why we turn around and say that Forex is a white person thing instead of a black person thing. 
So actually, you, you mentioned, um, you know, you brought in the university. Um, you brought that in as far as, you know, I know people who are hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to the university and that and are the return is maybe eighty thousand dollars a year USD. Um, do you think it would be make more sense? I'm sorry about that. Do you think it would make more sense to invest in uh, financial education when it comes to stocks, bonds, forex, Bitcoin uh, versus um, um, you know, going to a four year university to get a, a, a I mean, art degree. Yeah, I feel you. I, I think it all depends on what the person is wired to be wired to do. I mean, if if you're wired to be a professor or wired to be a doctor, the more power to you. Um, but just know that you're going to be spending over a hundred thousand dollars for about a sixty or seventy thousand dollar a year job, if that. Uh, and that is before tax. Uh, what I want to try and, I guess, point out is that when we've gone through our schooling system, I'm not sure how it is in the States, but in Australia, you go through your, you know, your elementary, you go through your high school, and then you go through your tertiary education. The emphasis on investing isn't really placed as important. Right. And so when we come into the real world, you know, people are slapped with the, the issue of paying taxes and we're like, okay, well, What's the issue of paying taxes? How do we do that? Because there wasn't emphasis in school in our formative years where we're sponges to be able to learn that. I think that if we had a an economics class or a term or a semester where people were taught how to invest money and know that the banks, the banks that we use our hard earned money to save in, they use our money to then trade in the Forex market. You then rewind to think maybe if the banks do that with my money and they make 300 or 400% a year off, off my money and only give me two, then why can't I take that skill and do the same thing? Wow. That, that, that's the thing. You, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm, I'm not dissing education. I'm more trying to empower people to seek knowledge because a book can teach you one thing, but remember our history is biased. What they teach you in school is very biased. They want to teach you what they want you to know, not what is good mm. for you to know in the future. And so if you're able to put in the time and say, hey, if I'm able to get my smartphone and spend less time on WhatsApp and less time on Facebook and actually dive in to know how to understand the trends of the market, it can do me good in the long term. You know what? I, I I was just talking to somebody today as far as, um, you know, asking if they could be my uh, uh, Mr. Perryman. Thank you so much for the super chat uh, in, in regards to ask uh, in, in them being my uh, accountability coach, accountability coach, because I would say cell phones could be you could be productive on them or they could be your worst enemy. And I told that person, like, look, man, I've been caught up in the bullshit the last couple of weeks as far as, you know, Kanye West, Bill Cosby, and the amount of time I could be spending, uh, I mean, that the amount of time I spe I'm spending on that, I could um, be learning stocks and and bonds and, and Forex and Bitcoin. So uh, I'm glad you said that because, I mean, we, we need to make uh, better, better use of our time versus uh, wasting it. I think if I could just add on to that point, if people are willing to spend $1,200 or $800 on their smartphone and their smartphone is making them money, then their smartphone is now classified as a dumb phone. So, you know, you, you need to be able to yield returns on what you've spent your money on. You, the next Yeezys are good and they're going to be comfortable, but is that making you money? You know, it, it's, it's not about being flashy or looking good to impress people that you don't even like. It's about actually putting in the money and getting the return that is due you. And I think that's the concept, especially in our generation, that it, it seems to go over our head in that retrospect. Okay. Uh, somebody in the chat room said, um, I love this topic. I really do believe that we can change generational wealth in one generation with these skills. And then Emmanuel says, Dianus Forex is what I've tr I've been trying to tell you to feature. It would help blacks if they learned it. What are, what are, what are, what are your thoughts on these statements? I, I totally agree. Um, whoever put that in the chat box, I salute you for that. Um, <clears throat> it, was, it wasn't something that was common in my household. In fact, I was shunned in my household for even participating in Forex uh -huh. because they associate Forex with scam. 
you know so right. I'm, I'm on this journey seeking knowledge to be able to be better meanwhile my family are looking down on me saying it's a waste of time and i don't know why it's shunned in our community um you look at the rothschilds you look at all these people even these rappers that we look up to now they're investing into crypto floyd right. money what mayweather jay-z 50 cent they're all seeing the potential in this field and i think that if we have a couple of you know brothers and sisters who are influential in our field to be able to say yes i'm willing to teach our brothers and sisters it can then change our community for the better now let, let's let's start off with basics uh what what exactly is forex okay so forex is a combination of two words two words uh foreign exchange uh -huh. and i think everyone especially if you're african have gone through the the i guess the adventure of sending money back home okay right. so you've gone to your western union your money gram or even the foreign exchange teller or if you've traveled overseas and you have to trade your us dollars for your ghana city or your naira or your south african rand you've actually participated in forex a long story short forex is actually selling one currency for another okay you cannot use your us dollar in south africa yes it will look nice it will be much more expensive but the locals only use a local currency and so what you have to do is get your local currency and make it their local currency. All we're doing is using that philosophy on our phone or on our laptop to be able to say, hey, I'm going to trade this, these euros that I've invested in in exchange for the Japanese yen in hopes that the Japanese yen will get stronger over time and that the euro will get weaker. And after a time, we can take out our profits to know that the Japanese yen has gotten stronger. I've made X amount of my investment back. Now, now the question always is, and I might be jumping up ahead, jumping ahead a little bit. You know, I don't, I have, I have five dollars in my pocket. Right. You know, if I got five dollars in my pocket. You know, how in the hell can I flip um, five dollars? Uh, I mean, what can I do with five dollars? And I know that's a little bit of money, but that's literally what we get as far as people saying that you know you know they don't have enough money to invest in like what, what are your thoughts on that my, my thought is this seek the time to be able to say hey how can i compound this five dollars if this five dollars is coming in every week that will be twenty dollars in a month and then times up by 12 that's 140 in a year so you mm -hmm. can say hey you know what i'm going to do for the next 12 months while i'm compounding my five dollars i'm putting it in my piggy bank I'm gonna learn how to trade Forex. And lucky enough for us, we have a thing called demo accounts. So you can trade with fake money to know how it actually feels, to know how to put in the trade, uh, to know how to win and how to lose. And after a time when you're confident, you can say, hey, I'm willing to put this $100 on and then you know trade bit by bit and get $2 returns here and $3 returns here and 50 cent returns here, and then build that up so it can be sizable. Um, obviously, the more you have, the bigger the return, but that doesn't exclude the fact that people with small amounts of money can then turn it into something mega. Okay. Now, now people are just, I mean, every, I mean, everyone's loving the, uh, the topic. Um, everybody, thank you. Who, 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 everyone who's super chatted so far, thank you so much for, uh, for, for super chatting. Um, now, if you could break down what I guess cryptocurrency is, because I know there's many different types. I'm actually investing in a crypto called uh, Carrot Pay uh, or mm -hmm. Carrot, Carrot Bar. So uh, if you could break down what cryptocurrency is as well. Okay, so cri cryptocurrency was, um, you know, an element that was introduced in the late 2007, early 2008. Uh, with the first of them being Bitcoin, which is now popularly, popularly known. Uh, it is simply trying to remove the middleman out of the equation and have more anonymous uh, transactions. So, you know, if I'm sending money from myself to yourself, the bank can then see how much money uh, you've received and therefore it could be taxable. Right. Cryptocurrency has eliminated that aspect because all most of the transactions are anonymous. Now, there can be complications because there are some coins called privacy coins and others that are more like well known. But what they want to try and do is remove the middleman and have like uh, your currencies and, and your your money not taxed, you know. And so we can get now the upper hand against the banks who do tax us and who do take our money and use it to become richer while we keep you know working and becoming poorer. Um, you know, loose terms of words, but that's what cryptocurrency is. It's the, the, the only disadvantage, disadvantage with cryptocurrency, which we're beginning to find is that it's not regulated. 
And the government, especially in America right now, are doing everything they can to shut it down. Mm. And if they can't shut it down, they want to try and get involved so it does, does become taxable. So you have to be careful in terms of when you're sending your anonymous transactions of where it goes. Because once you send it, you can't get it back. Unlike with bank transfers, you can call the bank and say, I made an error. They can locate what your funds are and they can reverse it. With crypto, once you've lost it, you've lost it. Uh, and so there's good and bad with that as well. All right. So we got a lot of people. Matty Ghost, thank you for the super chat. And thank you for the super chats from yesterday. In fact, everybody, oh, my, and I apologize. Uh, whoever super chat, please send me an email so you can receive a postcard. I need your, uh, I need your physical address. Just let me know if you want me with the King of Alada or if you want me with uh, the uh, Ashanti uh, Royal Guard. So, everyone, thank you so I much. I the Ashanti one. <laughs> um, dude, no, no, listen, listen. Uh, email me your address. I'll, I'll say they, they fly. They, they'll make it to Australia. Oh, what? Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Ashanti, that's my, yeah. that's my home. So. Okay, yeah. I was just uh, I was just there in December uh, for the uh, Aquisede Festival, and I'll be back in uh, the December. Well, yeah, yeah. November nice. December. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, do you, so, do you think people should still invest in cryptocurrency? Of course, hundred uh, percent. Okay, I, I won't say hundred percent. I want to say that you need to invest within reason. Uh, the reason why I say that is because everything involves risk. Okay, I equate um, anything risky. And, and compare it to, you know, seeing seeing a girl for the first time, having a one night stand, and having sex with her unprotected. It's oh. just as risky. Anything can happen. You know what I mean? Wow. It's the same risk as you oh. know <laughs> buying a house in a in a area that has high risk of having a hurricane sweep through. You won't get that return on investment that you hope for because a hurricane has just swept swept your house away. So everything right. that you need to do, whether it be crypto, whether it be relationships, whether it be your house, whether it be in any field, needs the required amount of research done first before you invest. So the thing with cryptocurrency is you need to know what a blockchain is. You need to know how you can get the hand on your cryptocurrency. How can you exchange your fiat money, which is your normal regular currency into Bitcoin or into Litecoin, Ethereum? Um, what's a smart contract? Um, you know, all these different things. If I have Bitcoin, can I exchange my Bitcoin into Ethereum? Mm -hmm. So you know, there's a whole lot of things that you need to learn there. And then with Forex, there's a whole different field you need to learn there. So it all comes to how much do you want it? And what is the end goal? You know, if you've worked your nine to five and you're sick of it, then maybe this is something you can do for half an hour a day. Uh, and that will be 14 hours a month that you can really invest time into. So you can use your spare change to be able to invest uh, into these different mediums. Mm. Mm -mm. So, I mean, so why aren't and, and, and even myself included, man? It's just I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is, Rodney. And I'm, I'm just as guilty. We've just been sold on get your degree, go work a nine to five. When you're 65, draw from your 401k. That's that a lot, times, a lot of times, a lot of people don't see a way out. Why aren't people, I guess, taking advantage of opportunities like this one? Fear. I think nine times out of 10, it's fear. Um, uh -huh. Look, we, we've been programmed and conditioned since we were little to follow one system. You go to school and you know, as, as we've come out of school, there's so many different ways of thinking. But when you're in school, you only everyone has different minds, but you only have one exam. Do you right. know what I mean? And you're going through right. that in each and every year. So you're programmed for 13, 14, 15 years to think one way. And so now when something new comes, you're confronted and you're like, no, this is not something I'm used to because all my life I was told I need to get good grades so I can get a good job, so I can get a good car, get a good wife and get a good house. If I don't do that, then I won't be able to do this. And so that's what they've done to be able to catch us in, in the what we call the middle class. The middle class were too scared to take risks. Every rich person that you will speak to, they will say the number one thing that you need to do is take risks. OK, it's as risky as getting on the airplane for the first time or going skydiving or going scuba diving. It's scary at first, but when you see the thrill of it all, uh, then you know that, hey, it's not that bad. Uh, and so I think once people overcome the fact that, hey, uh, I know I might lose money, but it's either this or going back to the same job that I hate going to on Monday morning or, you know, not being able to get that leave or not being able to, able to go on that holiday. So it's about understanding that. Once you overcome your fear of 
this could be a possibility for me, then then the, the results are endless. What made you get interested into, uh, I guess, finance? <laughs> it's it's a long story. So I, I'm a preacher. Uh, I'm a gospel artist as well. Okay. I was on top of the world about four years ago. So I was performing I, I'm, for. I'm gonna I'm talk shit too. Excuse my language. White like white Jesus. Like you love white Jesus. Oh, you, you see when if anyone. I'm giving you a hard time. World, I, just, I just I can't help oh, it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. If anyone in this world thinks that Jesus is white, then they're delusional. Okay. 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 All right. So, like, but, that's, but go that's ahead. Like, I didn't, I didn't talk shit, but go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your story. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Everyone has a belief system that is in line with what they believe, and that's cool. Like, that's the the freedom of speech and thought and and, and belief and everything. Um. So I was on top of the world, preaching, performing with Mary Mary, going around the world. I was actually engaged once upon a time, and I was close to getting married. And long story short, uh, my fiance at the time took all of my money oh. and then turned around. Uh, yes. So it was like she was in debt. If you don't mind me asking, we were just talking somewhat um, relationships yesterday. Yeah. Like, okay, from what you know now, and I know that I know we're going to get back on topic, but this is important because I think money and mental relationship like kind of go hand in hand. Definitely. Um, definitely. Uh, uh, would you recommend men to have separate accounts? If they get married, get a prenup. Like, how does she get access to your money? Oh my All god! Right. I well, just th this this circumstance was different because we were childhood sweethearts. Oh, god, that's I mean? even worse. So that's it's even worse. worse. So uh, after a time, you're blinded to see so-called signs that you would normally see if you ha hadn't have known someone. And mm -hmm. and besides that, the, the circumstance of which it all came together was that she had a child from a previous relationship. He ended up becoming my godson, but he only knew me as his dad because I was the only guy there. So it was like, oh, kind of natural to be like, hey, look, he sees me as his dad. He doesn't know any different. Let's you know get it on and go to the next step. She's like, yeah, I've always loved you and blah, blah, blah. So everything seemed right and everything like that. Uh, uh, I guess what kind of started going in the opposite direction, and that was pretty much when it was too late, the ring was already on the finger. So it was kind of like, hey, you know, I'm flaunting my stuff. It was just this constant nagging and need to have more money, you know, and that is something for men or women that if that's happening in the beginning, it's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now I'm with my I'm with a new partner now and she's amazing because money has never been the central focus. And maybe she's conscious enough to know what I've been through in the past, but she's grateful for what we have now, not for what we don't have. As opposed to my partner in the past, she was always thinking about what she didn't have, even though I provided her the world. Let me ask you, was she Ghanaian? Half. Half Ghanaian and half Lebanese. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that's a, see, that was a Lebanese side. See, that's what that was. <laughs> bruv that was, that was a lovely I, I, I don't, don't want to say too I, I don't i don't want to say anything's attributed to culture it comes down to the human being because uh -huh. um, there's good and bad in every culture but at the end of the day we came to a crossroads where uh she was in debt she had a black mark on the credit and we wanted to buy a house so the only natural thing for me to do was get a loan to help her out in her situation but she had lied about how much she owed she knew I was willing to do it for her because we had spoken about it in the past. So she mentioned X amount. I'm not going to say the amount. It was a lot. I got the loan out for her. And then all of a sudden she got a new car and said, I don't feel this relationship no more. Uh, I don't want to get married to you no more. Mm -hmm. It was just out of the blue. You know what I mean? So it wasn't something that was, you know, creeping up and there were signs here and there. It was like as soon as she got the money, hey, you know, this marriage thing, I'm not feeling it. And then she goes, oh, by the way, you will never live up to the expectations you think that you'll live up to. You will never become a great preacher. You'll never become that great musician. Uh, you know, you'll never become rich because all the preachers that are around you who are in their mid-40s, they're driving Range Rovers. And here you are still driving your 1998 Toyota. So you are not going to be good enough. And mm. so when we split, I was, I was super depressed, okay? And I was actually thinking about committing suicide. Oh, God. And it was so it, it, it's, it's rough, but this is how good you know God is in my situation, that every time I was looking on YouTube videos and stuff like that, Forex kept coming up on those YouTube ads. It mm -hmm. just kept coming up. I'm like, what is this thing? And from the second I saw it, I was hooked. And I think it was more of a distraction for me not to kill myself than to invest in money. But then when I saw the potential of, hey, this is something I could use to actually liberate myself and actually build to a better life, 
I'm looking at myself now, two and a half years later, and I am now teaching people around the world how to be able to be smart with their money. So, so this, and so this, this just happened two and a half years ago. This happened two and a half years ago, and I've been building my life up ever since. Um, two and a half, yeah, so close to two and a half, yeah, two and a half, yeah. So, so were you pretty much uh, be before you started learning forex and Bitcoin two and a half years ago? Were you pretty much? Uh, please don't take this personal. Uh, would it be financially illiterate? Illiterate? Did you know about stocks and forex? Or no, uh, I wouldn't say financially illiterate, but I was all more of the wavelength of I, I had a good paying job at the time, so it was more that I'm I'm a save. I'm I'm gonna put my things together. I'm gonna buy some like some land in Ghana and do this and do that. I wasn't so much of the let me trade. I was more of the let me save kind of guy, okay, gotcha. and I think that's what attracted my my ex fiance to me knowing that my money management skills was on point so there was always something in the bank mm -hmm. you know so that was pretty much that but then when, when when everything came out and you know i am a minus and i've have you know you know um debt collectors knocking at my door and you know uh, you know, the different credit unions trying to repossess my car. And I've gone from this good, nice paying job to sleeping in my car. And, you know, every chance I get, you know, having those hobo showers when you go to the local park and, you know, you wash your armpits and you change your clothes and all your clothes are in your car. You've gone from the, the highest highs to the lowest lows. And you're thinking, what can I do to get out? And Forex just kept popping up on those YouTube ads because I was watching Fresh Prince at the time. I'm like, Will Smith is funny. I'm just going to keep watching that until I forget about my problems. Uh, and then I was like, okay, what's this Forex thing? And I, I literally was studying that thing 40 hours a week. I'd finish my job and then I'll just be studying it and studying it and studying it. And yeah, that that's so, it. No, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I was just saying it's turned from, you know, a, a muddy situation to a situation where like I've gone around and I've spoken to different people around the world and you'd be so surprised how many, especially men, I know there are women on the call who have gone through their own situations, but you find that men, they don't have a voice in society anymore. You know what I mean? If you say, if you find 10 men who have all said, you know what, like my wife took everything or I was repossessed, they're going to tell you that you weren't man enough to be able to control your situation. But if you're a woman and you're in that situation, you know, that man was evil. Oh, so wow. we don't have legs to stand on. But you know? I'm going to tell you this. this is getting, and I mean, you're in Australia. It's getting to the point now here in America like especially if you're a black man that likes uh i know you're you're a guy you're a god-fearing man so i'm gonna I'm a try to keep it clean if oh, you like b100 if, man b100 okay if you're a black man like they're trying to make it now where get you can't even get pussy anymore like getting pussy <laughs> is a bad thing. but if you're a black man you like uh you like to you like to ride the hershey highway you know you know you know that's that they they'll celebrate that more like that's what's going on yeah. out here now like black men who who get pussy like is is it's a um, it's, they're making it like a bad thing now. But black men that ride the Hershey Highway, you know, what I mean, they you know they're getting celebrated. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a shame how how backwards everything everything is. But what I want to just say, add quickly for anyone who's listening who has gone through that situation is don't try and punish the person you are with now or the person you're going to be in the future with because of that situation. You know what I mean? The person who you're with should be understanding enough to be able to help you heal through the process and not punish you more. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to say get a prenup and you know have your own separate account and don't talk about money because the person you're with shouldn't suffer because of, you know, former transgressions as well. So, you know, there's a fine line between it all, you know, go with, go with discernment and go with diligence. Uh, somebody brought up penny stocks. Are you, are you I, into penny stocks as well, or I'm I'm not really into penny stocks so much. I know I have a lot of friends in it. I know Tim Stikes got famous through it and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I, I'm more of a forex person. I like the liquidity. I like the movement of it all. Um, cryptocurrency is a bit volatile for me, so I'd rather hold it as a stock than actually trade it. And um, yeah, the, those are the two the two main things. But I, ha I have knowledge in it, so okay. uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's not my thing really. So someone who's interested, we'll start off with Forex, somebody who is uh, interested in, in, in getting started in Forex, like what, where, where should they get started at? Like what? I mean, there are a couple of sites like um, Baby Pips. Yeah. So, 
you have babypips.com. So it's a free the, the baby picks? Pips, yeah. So B A B Y P I P S okay. dot com. Um, they have free education, free, you know, learning and everything like that. So you can go at your own pace. Of course, YouTube's also a good one. You can just type in Forex strategies and all these things pop up. Uh, my main thing is this, is that uh, I mentor uh, a lot of people in a company and I mentor them through the system because we have education, we have software, we have products, we have people giving webinars, you know, we have a whole academy there. And what I recommend is that you should not learn on your own because no one can challenge your thoughts, no one can mentor you, and no one can keep you accountable as you grow. So I'm mentoring right now about 150 people. Okay. All right, and I make sure that they're all involved in the webinars. They're all involved in our group chats. We're all showing charts because once you're in that environment and you're not scared of getting things wrong, but you're actually saying, hey, guys, this is what I see, you become better. And, and my guys can attest to that because I started off with a group of three just six or seven months ago, and now it's 150. So whatever we're doing is working. You know what I mean? And if people want more information, um, you can shoot them my link or my personal Facebook and whatever, and they can connect with me. Um, but yeah, babypips.com is, is is very foundational in, in that sense, and you can learn a lot um, of, of Forex basics. Okay, so we, we, have a, uh, we have a couple questions. So question number one, in fact, I'm gonna ask them both, um, so I won't, I won't miss them. Um, someone said, don't trade without learning technical for analysis and then another person said ask him about market manipulation um <laughs> all right so yes there is market manipulation there's manipulation everywhere so for example uh, and and these are traders who are speaking so let me just try and like speak to them about their question no, their ahead, and break it um so market manipulation only comes when it's convenient to the market makers and so what happens is that something might happen in society, but we won't know about it until later on because they want to use that piece of news as part of their agenda to push press in a certain direction. So, for example, North Korea and South Korea would have, you know, um, formed their uh, allegiance and formed their peace treaty months ago. But because the Japanese yen wasn't performing in a, in, in a nice element, they wanted to save that news to a point where the Japanese yen could set up for a nice drop, and then they pumped that news. So when that news is pumped, all the investors can get behind the Japanese yen to push price in that direction. So that's the, that's the market manipulation then. Technical analysis comes with a bit of fundamentals. So once you know how to be able to draw your trend line, support and resistance, understand your indicators and whatnot, you can then align everything to meet your sentiment. But understand the sentimental value, which is how you feel. There's technical analysis, which is what you're drawing. And there's fundamental analysis, which is what's going around in the world. When you pair up all three of those things, then you can be much more of an accurate trader. Now, in layman's terms, what I just said is that everything is manipulated in this world, okay? And what you have to pretty much do is ride the wave of the manipulation, okay? So when you see price at a certain level and it's not moving anywhere and it's being there for a couple of days, months, or years, it's because a news event is waiting to happen to push price to where it's supposed to go. It's just the nature of the Grammys. You know, the Grammys are not based on talent anymore. It's based on a board of 12 or 13 people who vote someone to say, hey, if we push this person today, we can get X amount of sales. We can get X amount of merchandise. We can do this, this, and this. Same thing with Forex. It's just that it's very much disguised um, with what's going on in the world. But yeah, it happens. Ooh, that's a great point. Now, uh, shift topics just a little bit. How do you feel about uh, gold and silver? Because somebody brought it up in the chat room. It's great. Once you know how to trade, one okay so so do you think we, have, we have a lot of traders on the call do you think physical gold or uh, or is it called paper gold like what do you uh if you, if you can get your hands on physical gold that's great because that's going to continue going up in value mm -hmm. um but if you want to trade paper gold that is also fine now understand to those who just asked about gold and silver understand that gold correlates well with the usd japanese yen currency pair mm -hmm. so if the usd jpy is going up then gold will go down so understand the correlation between the two that when the J when the japanese yen is performing well gold becomes powerful uh when it's not then the usd is becoming powerful which is why when trump was going to office um the the um the price of gold tanked 
Uh, no, it went up in value. It went up. It just kept going up. They had no faith in the U.S. dollar. Um, but when they heard rumblings of Hillary Clinton going into office, the U.S. dollar gained power. So it's all about, you know, all that sort of sentiment. Understand that gold and the U.S. dollar are hand in hand. But if you can have physical um, pieces of gold, it will, it will do you well in the future mm -hmm. because our currencies are getting more and more worthless due to inflation. Now, as far as Bitcoin, where can people go who are interested in learning Bitcoin? Where can they go and learn more about just crypto in general? Like how would someone get started in the crypto? Oh, well, there, there are so many things. Um, first of all, I mean, there's no set curriculum because, you know, cryptocurrency is still fairly new. So I suggest that you get most of your information and due diligence from YouTube. Uh, there are a couple of documentaries on Netflix about the, the, the origins of Bitcoin. It will be good for people to have that knowledge in there so they understand how it works. And then when you want to invest in it, it's easier to invest into Bitcoin because you can just download Coinbase. You can just say, hey, I want to connect my credit card to Coinbase and say, hey, I want $200 worth of Bitcoin today. And you can let that thing rise or drop. So, you know, getting cryptocurrency is easier in that sense. But if you want more in-depth knowledge, there are different companies around the world uh, who can offer education and signals and all those different analysis. Uh, of course, it's a monthly monthly fee, but you'll be able to get your, get your returns just um, as you expected. Somebody said... Um yeah, Bowden. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, excellent topic, Dynast. I've been trading Forex for two years. How many lots does he trade? What is his favorite pair? Does he trade long term or short term? Does he use the COT report? I don't use COT reports. Um, I'm more of a technical analysis um, type of guy. I know I trade market geometry, and I know not a lot of traders know how to trade that. I invented a theory called the rhombus theory, which means a combination of two triangles where you find the impulse, the correction, and the future impulse move to where you find your take profit. I know that's a lot of jargon. Uh, lot sizes depending on how much you have in your account. So it's not about how much I have. It's about how much you have. So what I say is that if you're going to have a $1,000 account, you want to risk 2%. 2% of $1,000 is what? Uh, 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 what? $2? Yeah. No, $20. No. Twenty dollars, yeah. So if you want to risk, yeah. if you want to risk twenty dollars, you want to have a one to three or one to five risk to reward ratio. So you know, with that being said, I'm more of a intraday towards a swing sort of trader. I'm I'm happy to hold my trade over three to five days, even a week, um, if it yields me you know three hundred to five hundred pips uh, every time I trade. I'm 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 content with that. I'm happy with that. I don't like scalping. Um, I think scalping are for people who don't have a life because you have to watch your phone all the time. Swing trading allows you to put in a trade, live your life, do whatever it is you need to do, and then come back to the trade within a couple of days or a couple of hours without any worry. You can sleep. You can do your thing. Uh, it's all easy breezy. I hope I answered all the questions. I couldn't I could too, to hopefully answer um, all the questions. Uh, shifting topics a little bit. Somebody asked about the uh, petrol dollar versus the petrol wine. You know anything about that? Petrol? The petrol dollar versus the petrol yuan. Yen, I think. Yeah, the petrol. Uh, the the one, the, is that the Chinese currency? Yeah, yeah, is it, is it, yeah yuan. That's Chinese, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, follow, follow the relationship between Trump and the president. I think his name is... Uh, it's XI, I think it's Chi or something like that. Follow their relationship. It's going to be very, very volatile. In the end, their aim is to actually make the Chinese currency stronger than what it is. Because right now, your American dollar is tearing it up at the moment. We thought it was dead. It's now resurrected and come back to life. And now Trump, um, let me say this without being too controversial. No, 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 bro, bro. We, we, we don't know. We, go ahead and say it. No, 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 I'm not going to be no, like okay. Kanye and say I love Trump. I'm not going to be like Kanye. But what I'm going to say is that behind the scenes, he has done a lot economically for the country that people don't let on. You know, he, he's meet, met with all these prime ministers and presidents who owed your country a lot of money from the times of World War II, and he's actually bridged that gap. Mm -hmm. He's actually been part of the system of helping that unemployment rate go down, you know. So 
it's it's actually the lowest it's been since 1973, and that's happened in his term. So he's really done a lot of things econo economically. I'm not going to say too much about his character, but in terms of what he's about, in terms of economics, he's been pretty much on point. And I see your US dollar being back to its glory days where, you know, us in Australia can't online shop no more because things are too, too expensive. So, um, yeah, just keep, keep, keep a lookout for that as the US dollar continues to get stronger. Um, expect the relationships between each country to also get stronger and rely on that. When you guys are weak, we become weak. Wow. Uh, somebody just said Iran, Venezuela, Russia, China, and Syria just stopped the petrol dollar. Um, let me say this. Don't believe everything you read on the news. Okay. There's a very, very uh, true saying, and that is always, um, what is it? sell the news and buy the hype or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, until it becomes fact, don't don't place too much emphasis on what so-called experts are saying because today they say Trump hasn't done anything and then tomorrow he's now the hero because he restored the peace between North and South Korea. So, you know, just, just be careful about what they float out there because they manipulate the news. Okay. Um, Pearlie McCall Perryman. Again, per Pearlie, thank you for the super chat. Make sure you email me your address. Uh, what is one of your best tips for one of your best tips for intraday trading? Um, always have about three or four confirmations. Okay, have your trading checklist in place. You need to know exactly what the pair is. Is there anything happening happening fundamentally with that pair? Does that fundamental news match up with your technical analysis? Is there an indicator that can you know confirm what you're thinking? Because a lot of people, what they do is they get the indicator to act first, and then they do everything around the indicator. Don't do that. Make sure your indicator is the last thing that you want to check before you enter your trade. Another thing with intraday is don't over leverage because it might seem nice and they will fake you out with impulse moves and wicks and everything like that. You just want to wait for the right time. And finally, what I'll say is no retest, no entry. If price breaks structure and doesn't retest, don't enter. Wait for a re-entry because your resistance will become support. So make sure support is established before you make that buy or vice versa for the sell. Okay. Uh, so somebody just made a great point in the chat room. Um, anybody who ever thought the U.S. dollar was trouble doesn't understand white supremacy. We don't owe anybody anything because white people own the IMF. What are your thoughts on a statement like that? Like, because everybody, because everybody keeps saying we owe China billions and billions of dollars, and one day they're going to want to collect, and that's going to mean the end of America. Well, like, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, look, the, the U.S. dollar was in trouble for a long time. Let, let's just separate sentiment from, from what's happening factually. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump did something very, very risque, and he put out a tweet to say the American dollar is too strong, and he actually collapsed your dollar. If anyone, any trader who is here that can attest to that, just put in a Y or a yes in the chat box if you, if you actually saw that happen. So, yeah, there were all these things that were happening, but Trump actually did go on a rampage to get that money back. So before, you know, people could say that the USA owed money to them, he turned around and said, well, you owe us money first. And that's how <laughs> you're able to stay afloat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, but, but, but I'm asking, like, do we owe, I mean, does China, I mean, does China owe us money, though? Like, I, Look, apparently the whole earth is in debt. To uh -huh. who? America. To who? America. No, the whole, the whole world is in debt. To China. The China. But... But if, 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 is it, if it's to China, then how is China in debt to America? You see what I'm trying to say there? Got it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't talk about like you know, the whole white supremacy thing and everything like that. I, I do believe one thing and that everything is manipulated to um, beef up the, the, the U.S. dollar. The, the U.S. dollar will not die, but it'll go through seasons and, and, and peaks and valleys um, to really try and balance everything out. Like I said, if the dollar collapses, the whole world collapses because it's the most traded com uh, currency in the world. We rely on the U.S. dollar to keep the world going. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I, I agree with that point, but I try to remove the the notion of white supremacy out and just look at the facts of what they are trying to do with their agenda. And, 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 and keep in mind, the, these guys, 
um, like Trump and even Obama and everyone else who was a president was just a puppet. You know, mm-hmm. Democrats and the Republicans are, you know, two different wings of the of the same eagle. I, I, know, bro, I, I, wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I got like these. You know, I don't know if we keep it up. What's going on in America now? But basically, what they're doing, bro. Like if you're a black, if you're black, and if you decide that you're now conservative Republican, like they're calling you a free thinker now. Like that's like revolutionary. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, man, and like people are like really just, I don't know if they're just playing dumb and exploiting it for the money, but they're really like, and literally, white people will pat them on their head and say, "I'm so happy that you think on think for yourself." Like it's just. Yeah, it, it's, it's very it's very patronizing, and I think you know it's all done by design because you know, like I said, the system was taught to for us to all conform to think one way, right. and so when when you decide to think outside the box, they're gonna make you feel weird about it, or make you feel like you're crazy, but patronize you in the process by saying, "Well, you're a th- you're a free thinker," you, you know that they don't mean any any good by that, but you know it is what it is. Yeah, it's just it's um. Uh... It's just it's it's uh it's interesting, man. And like like we we like I know that, but it's just you see these people that just buy into it, man. It's just like oh my god, man. Like <laughs> like you said, Democrat, left wing, right wing, same bird, man. Like yeah, yeah. God, it's, same. Uh, same, same. Yeah, man. So um, no, I, I think a lot of people are bringing up uh. So the okay, so uh, here we go. Do you think? Uh, and I'm not going to hold you accountable to whatever response you give. Do you think that the dollar can completely collapse? Like, you think that's no. going to happen? Like, you think, this, like, you know, Alex Jones, Illuminati, Illuminati, the Grays are coming, the Grays are coming, a uh, bit of a group. Someone needs to get Alex Jones. Crash, Jones crash, crash. Your FEMA camps, <laughs> FEMA camps. Like, do you, like, do you see um, something like, is that... No, I, I don't think it will ever go away. I know cryptocurrency is it's, it's a means to try and combat that. Um, if we want to talk about conspiracy theories, I think the, that cryptocurrency was actually made by the government. And this is one whole elaborate ruse to suck everybody in to give people hope. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't, you can't take advantage of what's going on. The dollar can never collapse because it's part of their agenda in the end. It's part okay. of their agenda of whatever it is that they want to do. Uh, inflation will keep going. They'll keep printing more dollar bills, but the dollar will never die, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Okay. Here we go. And, you know, a couple more questions, and I know you, I know you have to get some rest. Uh, where, where's, where does Africa play in all of this? Unfortunately, Africa can't play. Since, okay. the, beginning, since the beginning of time, I mean – Africa is a sad story. Africa has all the potential in the world, uh, and, and this this is this is going to be a, a threefold thing, okay? Because I know that uh, you know, there's going to be loopholes and stuff missing, but Africa really needs to fix themselves because we have too many guys coming into power in for themselves. They take care of their own. They take all the money, and then when they're out of power, before you know it, they're inflated. Like I mean, look at Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like their, their dollar is pretty much meaningless. Africa has all these resources, but since the beginning, they were always told that whatever they had wasn't good enough. So it has to be in proper care to someone else, which is why all of our artifacts are not in Africa, but they're in like, you know, they're in England or they're in some, you know, Colosseum. In, so, in so do, you, do you agree? With, and we're shifting topics a little bit. Do you agree with? Uh, I think uh, there were some artifacts from uh, Ethiopia in in, in a museum in England, and they're like, "Look, we're not going to uh, give you your artifacts back, but uh, we'll loan them to you." So, do you agree with stuff like that? Hell no. Okay, but you, but you just mentioned you're, about you're, 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 you're gonna loan me something that already belongs to me. Okay, so I guess I misheard your statement earlier that you just said as far as our artifacts. Uh... No, no, no. What, what what I said was is that since the beginning of time, they've come in to make us think that whatever we have is not valuable, uh-huh. and then they take it by saying that you you can't take care of these things. They're not good anyway, so let us take it for you, 
and let us mind it. That's what I'm saying. So exactly. it's like, okay. Me, okay. You, you know, yeah. That, that's what I meant. Okay, I got you. Understand, understand. So yeah, so basically, like we didn't see the value in Diamond. So Cecil Rhodes and the Oppenheimers yeah. or whoever um, took it, processes it in um, England, brings the diamond back to to South Africa and puts Tiffany's on it and yes. ups the price five thousand percent. Exactly, exactly right. Yeah, that that's my thought process. Um, controversial as it is, but you look at Africa and it's become a sad story. I go home sometimes. It's like we have the the intellect we have the 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 brain power we have everything it is to make africa a force but why isn't it mm -hmm. yeah but that, yeah, that's, sports, another, that's, that's another that's another uh that's yeah. another <laughs> we could do another video of that uh just just let me know um uh, um uh, when, whenever you're ready but uh yeah what we'll do we'll go ahead and uh but I, I have hope so do you have any hope in africa at all because i do i think i, I, I do, do too. I have hope I, I do too. I, I think um, that hope has been sparked into our generation because uh, I know I want to do a lot with Forex. I have I have teams in South Africa, in Nigeria, in Ghana as well, um, and uh, you know I have I have my heart in Congo because my partner's from Congo and Tanzania. Uh, I'm going to be going to Tanzania in August, and you know I'm, I'm training a lot of people to really be able to trade. And, and, and build up their economy so they can actually take back, you know, instead of having the Chinese investors come in and buy the property, we can buy our own and we can boost our own economy. So there, there is hope, but it has to start from us. Uh, and the, the ones who, uh, I guess, are of African descent, you know, you know, if you have ties to, to, to an African country, it's up to us to actually go back and say, you know what, we're taking back uh, what was originally ours and we're going to make it better. Hmm. No, that, that's a perfect, perfect response. Uh, yeah, so what we'll do, we'll go ahead and close it out. Please give everybody your contact information and then let everybody know. Uh, I know you spoke on it briefly in regards to uh, uh, the services you uh, you offer if they wanted to, you know, take out or utilize your service uh, sure. services. And uh, everybody also make sure you go to AmarachiTV.com. That's a platform for African African media. So please go to AmarachiTV.com. Make sure you sign up um, today uh, once once this chat is over. But go ahead. You have the floor. Go ahead and close out. Uh, well, I'll just put my name in the chat. I'm not sure if that just popped up or... Are, are sure. you... Uh, yeah. go, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you... Yeah, so I just popped my name into the chat. So if anyone wants to, you know, connect with me on Facebook or whatever, I'm pretty much on Facebook. Oh, you put it in the chat. Uh, like the chat, with like art, me, me and you are arch. Okay, here we go. I got it right here. Okay, let me go ahead. Yeah, and, uh, so you, you can put it in yours. I got uh, it. I'm maxed out on friends. So just follow me and shoot me a message. Uh, I go through my archived messages and filtered messages like once a day or once every couple of days. So if you want more info, just let me know that you heard everything. Uh, and you're interested in the additional products and services, I'll send you a video to see if you're interested and I'll take you by the hand and make sure that you're properly mentored uh, and, and taken through um, so that you can get the hope and, and, and the resources that you need to be able to, to go through uh, this Forex journey. It's not going to be easy. I, I haven't preached that at all. Uh, there's going to be frustrating times where, you know, some days you feel like you get it, other times you don't. Uh, there's going to be a lot of late nights. There's going to be times where, you know, it just won't make sense to you, but that's the beauty of learning. That's the beauty of life. Um, but I will be there as a mentor to make sure that I grow this group from 150 now to 1,000 uh, as part of my goal before the end of uh, 2018. All right, everybody. Uh, and, and once again, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. If you guys could please um, get the likes up uh, as I type this message, this response to somebody, please get the likes up. Uh, uh, but, but again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Make sure you go to Search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, make sure you go to uh, um, DynastyMirror.com, Amazon.com, search your name, Dynasty Mirror. Also go to AfricaPersonify.Africa. Also go to search for Hoover.com. And make sure you go to Africa Personified on all, all of the social media platforms as well. Uh, please like and share. If you did not super chat, please, um, please make sure you like and share uh, the content. That's all I ask for. If you don't super chat, just like and share. That's all you can do. It's free. Just like and share. Uh, so again, everybody, uh, thank you so much for joining us. 
Uh, Rodney, once again, brother, it was a blessing. We got to have you back on soon. So we need oh, to get, thank we, you. We, we, we got we to gotta get you back on. We got we to gotta, we gotta talk about Africa. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much for having me, man. No problem. So go ahead and get your rest. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Till next time, peace. Peace.